Welcome to the American Indian and Alaska Native Behavioral Health Webinar Series presented by the National American Indian and Alaska Native Addiction Technology Transfer Center. I'm Kate Trams and I'll be administering today's webinar. Today, Rose Dominic will be presenting Traditional Indigenous Healing. This training series is brought to you by the National American Indian and Alaska Native Addiction Technology Transfer Center, or ATTC. We are one of four national focus centers who serve the ATTC network. The, the network also includes 10 regional centers and a coordinating office. To learn more about our center or regional center, please visit our website. We have not yet announced the schedule for our 2015 American Indian and Alaska Native Behavioral Health Webinar Series, but we plan to have the first session on the second Wednesday of January, the 14th, so please mark your calendars and watch for our announcements to come out shortly. We also offer the Essential Substance Abuse Skills Webinar Series, and the next session will be held on December 17th, when Robert Foley will present Client, Family, and Community Education, for more information on these series, you can contact me at the email address or phone number provided on the slide. Our center is a NADAC certified educational provider and we'd be happy to provide you with CEHs for a $15 fee. The CEH request form is available for download in the files pod in the webinar screen. I will also be sending this form in a follow-up email to all who attended. Immediately following today's webinar, you will be redirected to our GIPRA evaluation. GIPRA stands for the Government Performance and Results Act, and SAMHSA asks us to evaluate our events in order to comply with this act and provide improved performance assessment and accountability. This survey asks about your satisfaction with the event and will take less than 10 minutes to complete. We thank you in advance for helping us to improve our programs. Before we start today's session, I'd like to go over a few instructions for the Adobe Connect system. To view the presentation in full screen mode, click on the full screen button at the top right corner of the presentation pod, which looks like four arrows pointing outward. To return to the regular view, click the button again. You will be muted for the duration of this webinar. Please use the Q&A pod to share your questions and comments, and we will address questions at appropriate points during the presentation. We'd also like you to be aware that this webinar records participant attention time. If you minimize the webinar or are working in another window, the system will record your participation as inactive, which may be reflected in the number of CEHs received. The opinions expressed in this presentation are those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the official position of CSAT, SAMHSA, or the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Today's webinar is presented by Rose Dominic. Uh, Rose is the Director of Preventative Services Behavioral Health at the Yukon Kuskokwim Health Corporation in Bethel, Alaska. As the Director, she has a primary responsibility for establishing traditional Yupik healing and promotion of healthy living, as well as integrating this into the mainstream behavioral health services. Programs are focused on healing the individual, family, and community from impacts of historical and lifetime trauma and activities to strengthen traditional healthy living skills. Rose has been instrumental in developing these activities addressing root causes of social issues in the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta following a career and retiring from the Alaska Department of Corrections. Rose holds a double bachelor's degree in criminal discuss, excuse me, criminal justice and Yupik Eskimo where she lives in Bethel with her husband, two daughters, and a grandchild. Um, so at this time I want to pass things over to Rose. However, I do um, just want to note that um, we may experience some te technical difficulties today. Um, Rose is joining us from a somewhat remote location and uh, sometimes the internet connection there is not always reliable. Um, Rose, let's see, how are things looking right now? Okay, it, it looks good. But we don't. We won't know what um, what's going to happen uh, for the duration of of this uh, time we have together. Yeah. So, first of all, I want to thank everyone who is participating today. Um, my my Yupik name is Nui Ayalmuk. I was named my grandfather um, at the time that my my aunt had passed away from TB when I was born. 
and in English, uh, as, as you've heard, my name is Rose. First of all, I would like to thank our creator for bringing all of us here together. And uh, I ask that um, we all uh, are able to teach each other, learn from each other in this circle um, that we have this morning. And um, so with that, I'm going to get started. And uh, um, preventative services at our tribal behavioral health, ser tribal health services uh, in the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta region of Southwest Alaska is, is quite new. And um, the board several years ago decided that um, the behavioral health services were not being very responsive to a lot of the issues in our region. So uh, as a result, we have the Department of Preventative Services and uh, the, the whole approach to providing behavioral health services in our region uses our culture, our, our ancestral wisdom in order to address many of our issues, which are, which many of you know are common in our indigenous communities across the country. Uh, suicide, substance abuse, domestic violence, sexual abuse, and the list goes on. So um, we're, we're extremely busy. We work very closely with our elders, and it's, it's a process of, of uh, much learning of our ancestral wisdom. So um, this, uh, the activities, everything that, that, um, that we do at preventative services is is uh, all has all been put together with uh, working very closely with our elders. All the activities that we we have, uh, the programs that we provide, have been developed um, with our elders at the lead, at the front end, providing guidance, training, and this was a process in which we had to do a lot of work with our elders um, to help them understand what the current situation is in our communities and, and why uh, we have, why we are the way we are. They needed to understand historical trauma. They needed to understand um, the barriers that, that the uh, the uh, modern behavioral health system, the institutions, how they're so very different and why it's unable to connect. So all of this understanding had to take place with our elders and in the process of healing, then they were able to um, revalue our ancestral wisdom in order to, to teach us. So it was a long, difficult process um, as we brought our elders to restore their place as teachers and, and the uh, ones who are passing on wisdom from our ancestors. So um, uh, there in the activities and the programs that we provide, uh, it, it's important to understand that what we have today really comes from three very different um, ideas. Uh, um, and, and as you can see in, in the slide, uh, first and very important is, is to understand the reason why 
we have so much chaos in our communities and why we're unable to, to provide appropriate, meaningful services is um, the fact that um, um, this whole idea of historical trauma and the impacts um, that, that we see today. Uh, that's, that's the first important thing that we have to remember in being able to uh, work with ourselves and our communities, understanding um, that these impacts uh, cause so much um, confusion, chaos, and, and uh, harm. And then the second thing is, is um, really being able to gather and learn and disseminate ancestral wisdom and knowledge. Um, we had a system in place before the non-native people came to our lands, and it worked very, very well for us um, in, in, a, in a climate, in a life that was so harsh we had to have a system that was so, um, uh, that worked. There was no room for, for mistakes. So we had a system that was very, very um, appropriate, that worked very well. And then the third thing to understand for all of us is, is that there's a different system in place. Um, we have these institutions, and this has happened in my own lifetime, the changes that I've seen. We had um, another culture and other people who had a different worldview, a different way of life, a different way of thinking, who took their institutions that were deeply rooted in, in this whole other system, they picked these up and plopped them into our communities and um, were unable to, to understand, were unable to utilize, were, were unable to support these systems. And, and a good example is the behavioral health services. We have our education system our prison system, we have um, all of these institutions, and we, we are not able to, to support these systems because we're not, our education, our way of life is not deeply re rooted um, into these systems. So all of us have to understand, we as Native people who are providing services, um, our non-native um, partners who are um, administering these services and running them, all of us need to understand that because when we don't, then it, uh, it, it, it's a barrier for all of us to be able to provide meaningful services. So in our trainings, in our, in our activities, we make sure that we we all understand whether we are providing services, whether we are um, uh, um, administering whatever institution in our communities, uh, or whether we are clients uh, um, seeking services. So all of us need to understand this, these, these things. <coughs> um, so the first thing, as I mentioned, um, and I use this, uh, um, this as an example for all of us to understand, I use the behavioral health services. When you look at, um, look at the, 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 the modern, um, behavioral health services. It's, it's a very, very structured system that's rooted in, in 
someone else's way of living, way of being. It's very structured, and it it um, it keeps out everyone who can provide support to an individual who's struggling with um, behavioral health issues. Um, and it's, it's a system in which a person who is credentialed, must be credentialed, who administers support for an individual. And um, all of the expertise, all of the knowledge, all of the everything is, is dependent on the person who's, who may be a clinician, a social worker, an expert. And it leaves very little room for an individual to, to be able to um, help themselves. And it's dependent on time, it's dependent on financial resources, and it, it's very dependent on uh, um, service providers who may or may not be available in the community. Very, very different is our ancestral behavioral health services. And the, the very important um, thing to, to remember in this, this system, which we had, um, is, is much of it is, is left to the individual to be very active in their well-being. And so our ancestors, right from pregnancy, had a system to teach awareness skills to every individual. Awareness and understanding that life happens every day, every minute of your life. We come across situations in which immediately you feel, you feel your, your emotions are in charge. And whatever you're feeling is where your mind is. And where your mind is, is what behavior results. So your feelings are the boss of how you think and how you behave. So that's a very important important idea in this in our ancestral behavioral health services system excuse me and um, and then the next important thing is is in this system is our elders our elders are the experts they're the ones who have ancestral wisdom and knowledge they're the ones who have experienced many many things in life, who, who've, who've experienced death, who've experienced pain, and, and who have used ancestral wisdom and knowledge to be able to navigate their way through, through those things um, in, in life as it is. And then, of course, the third thing is our ancestral wisdom and knowledge. We had a system where there were teachings, there were practices, um, ceremonies, rituals, a way of life that, that helped, helped to bring our mind, our spirit, our heart to uh, healing when we experience um, trauma and, and life as it, it, um, it came. And those worked. For us, they were, and, and our elders tell us that these were practices, these were ways that were done within our culture from the beginning of time. And, and we used, utilized all of that because it worked. So, and then our way of life is, is very therapeutic. When we're out um, subsistence, subsisting, gathering out uh, in, in the wilderness. That is very healing for us. 
and then our communities are very individual. So, um, and and where we're located, Alaska is so diverse. Um, our our traditions for for my people, which is inland, are are dictated by our surroundings, the land, uh, the hills, and the trees and the rivers. On the coast, they have different traditions. The ocean, the marine life, and all of that dictate, dictated what, um, what uh, their traditions are. And so, and in each of the communities, uh, the decision makers, the elders, uh, who play a role in the well-being of, of the community members, they're all, we, we, we as um, non-community members, we don't understand that and we don't know how to engage um, members of the community. And this is, this is much more so with um, service providers who come from other parts of the country, don't speak the same language, don't understand. So, this is one of the very important things that all of us need to understand when we're when we're providing services for our native people. And so we we try to bring understanding to non-native service providers. We try to bring understanding to our native people so that they're able to to um, engage um, either, systems in order to be able to support individuals in our community. So we want, if we want our elders to be part of the, the institutional behavioral health system, the elder needs to under, have an understanding of the structure so that they're able to, to know how they can provide the services with, with our clients requiring support. And if we have a clinician who's going to, to provide um, uh, maybe a treatment plan, uh, wants to engage support in the community, they need to have an understanding of our Yuchtak system, um, behavioral health services, and how, how the basic components are so that they're able to provide um, meaningful services for our clients. So um, all of us need to understand this, whether we're service providers, whether we, we deliver uh, programs and services, or whether or not we're, we're members of uh, the family members of individuals um, who are clients or a client. Um, so it's a system that really tries to engage our ancestral ways in which everyone is responsible, regardless of their being a service provider or the client. Um, and then, of course, the other very, very important thing is all of this is, is, is it, it's required that we approach this from root cause point of view. We were told early on with, by the, some of the most instrumental elders who worked with us that our, our ways look at the root causes of why there's, there's chaos um, or dysfunction. Um, involving an individual or a family. So we don't look at the behavior. We don't come from an approach that where we look at the tip of the iceberg and address behavior. If it's suicide, substance abuse, domestic violence, ch ch child abuse, neglect, all of these, these, um, these issues that are, are listed on here, and many more, that the system that someone else brought focuses on substance abuse or suicide, focuses on behavior. And the elder said, that's not how we 
help people. There's a reason why an individual who is going to, to turn to behavior like this, and it doesn't matter which of these, there is a reason why behavior is coming out. And our ancestral approach is to, to find that reason and address that. So in the same way with our communities, we, we understand that there's a reason why we are the way we are. And for our people in our region over the last 270 years, um, we, we have had trauma that results, resulted in behavior. Behavior that's very harmful today. And there's some things that have happened over the course of four to six generations that really disrupted our way to be able to teach our children, our families, how to be a good human being. And that system was taken away through a number of things that happened in our history. So, um, um, so the first thing, of course, then, for all of us is to understand our past because it's, it has a very direct impact on how things are with our people. And so <clears throat> we, we tell our stories. Um, when we have trainings, when we have conferences, when we work with people, I have looked at my genealogical history and how all the chaos came to my family. All the alcohol, all the death, all the violence, all the abuse. It started four generations ago with my, um, my great-grandparents when the missionaries, when the, the explorers, when they came to Alaska. First of all, they, they brought illnesses that our ancestors had no immunity and that was the, the first big assault to our people. Very so as an example, um, in my family, starting with my great grandparents, 200 years ago, um, when the illnesses came, there was death like you couldn't imagine. And it was many, many different uh, illnesses that our ancestors were exposed to. So immediately, our system, when, when all of our, um, our ancestors were left orphaned, the, 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 the system to teach from the elders to the children was, was severed. And so that was the start of our, our way of teaching, our systems beginning to collapse. And, um, and from there, religion was imposed an educational system was imposed. Our families had to relocate because our children had to go to school. And slowly, um, everything was just kind of dissected and broken. And um, so when we do trainings, um, I tell my genealogical story. Um, and, and it, it, it looks at and allows us to understand how 
with all of our families and our communities, how things fall apart. We begin to understand there is a reason why. And when we begin to understand all the anger, all the resentment, it begins to dissipate and that allows, that leaves a lot of room for us to begin to to focus on healing and transforming ways of thinking, ways of behaving. So, um, next slide, please. Um, so, we all begin to understand that the system to teach being in a way, we're not in tools and skills to help us navigate through this very difficult um, life, life as it is. And so we have developed patterns of behavior. And how to be a good human being, those are not taught by institutions. They're taught by family, your parents, your, your grandparents, your aunts and uncles. Those are not taught in boarding schools. They're not taught in orphanages. They're not taught in schools. So the system has completely taken over um, education, and and it's it it's not our way. Um, so all of us, our age, the generation before the generation before that, and the generations um, in front of us, our children and grandchildren, are trying to navigate this world, having no skills to deal with life as it is. So, so we, we try to bring that understand. Next slide. We try to bring that understanding so that healing can begin to take place, so that we can understand why we don't value our, our, our culture, we don't value who we are, and we don't seek out and our ancestral knowledge, why we, we don't think our elders and our parents are the most appropriate teachers why so many of our communities have lost language. So um, we understand that the pain that our ancestors have, have experienced, we are living it. So um, when all of us understand, including our elders, they they begin to look at the ancestral wisdom and knowledge that they still have, and they begin to teach us. So, um, so all of us, as Native people, we, we, we have a common ancestor. Collectively, um, we were born into this legacy, and so Next, next slide, please. So um, that in itself, understanding that, the byproduct of that amazingly is, is that it starts to bring healing. And the, 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 the good thing about that is it's not me or it's not a service provider or some expert outside of an individual who needs healing to be the, the, the one who is managing issues with a person. The approach, what to do, comes from each of the individuals who, who come to an understanding. They begin to find their approach, their own approach to healing. Um, so that's that's kind of a neat byproduct of understanding what our our history is. 
So, um, I'm sorry. Next slide, please. So, um, we understand then it's not, um, we're not, um, there's not something wrong with us. It, it's healing the broken spirit, healing the broken heart that restores much of the, 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 the need to, to be successful, to be able to, to succeed in school, in, in jobs, to be able to teach our children to learn and, and our, our ability to come together, connect as communities, connect as families, connect with our creator. That there's a good reason why all of that is in place, is not in place with our communities. So we find, next slide please, we find our own approach and we find meaning and, and our elders tell us we have to look at our history, we have to look at our experiences, we have to take them inside out and examine, examine what happened to us? How did this change us? How did it make us become? How did we become after we've experienced? So, next slide. So, we have to go to the place where we don't want to go. We have to examine that so that we're able to see what we need to do to help ourselves, to learn new habits, to utilize skills and tools that we, we, we had forgotten. So, um, so the most powerful way to become strong is to go to that weakness. So our stories, our experiences, our personal um, history, genealogical history, our personal lifetime stories, we as um, leaders in all of this work, we tell our stories, our trauma stories, our healing stories to, to everyone who's who's participating. In that way, we're able to make sense of, of all of what's going on with everyone um, participating. They begin to give form. They begin to have the words to make sense of, of, of chaos, to make connections. And whether or not they're able to tell their own story, when we as presenters are telling our, our healing stories, it's as if the, the listener is talking and telling their story. They're given the tool, the, the form of what's happened in their lifetimes. And they're able to begin to process um, in the mind so that the mind can tell the heart and the spirit it's going to be okay. So we do these in circles um, and and it, it, it really is inviting for healing to take place for anyone who's um, who's listening. Next slide. So, um, I just need to make sure, culturally based slide. Um, yes, that is what I'm on now. Okay, so um, this, the, the entire process that's used throughout all of this is, is all bits and pieces of how our ancestors did all of this. We tell stories, we tell our stories, we tell our healing stories, and, and 
the more important idea in our culture, going back through our ancestors, is um, in, if you want to be healthy, you have to be able to talk. That's the most important thing, to be able to tell your story. And we're told by our elders, if you can't talk to a person, go and talk to a dog. Go and talk to a log. Go talk to the trees. The dog, nature, um, they don't respond. They don't talk back. In other words, they don't make you feel shame that you need to get beyond to tell your story. So talk. And, and, and so we have many, many kinds of, uh, kinds of things in, in our culture that all point to how important it is for an individual to be able to learn how to talk. So that's part of the part of part of the biggest teaching in our culture in which all of our activities are are centered around getting others to talk about their lifetime experiences so that they can understand what those experiences have done to them so that there can be healing. So next slide. And so um this is um, a slide that encompasses all of the necessary heart skills in which are the most powerful medicine for a person to, to cope with and move beyond whatever kind of big hurts that they have um, experienced in life which has changed who they are, how they are, what their life is. And so our, our elders tell us that these are in, in, in this helping field, in helping others. You don't gain skills to work with people from books. These skills that, that you need are heart skills. And above, in, in the top circle, gunga, the, the word that starts with K, above everything else is, is love. If you work with a human, another human being, and if you have that love, it's the most powerful for connection, for healing, and for inviting others to be able to take that step step on the journey toward healing. And um, in our culture, the, the word in the center, kahuyun, it's a very, very powerful word. It's, it's, it's simply um, translated. It's a way to um, uh, connect to a person with love, compassion, patience, non-judgmental which is all of that. So this is what we call to, to really work with, uh, with our people. Next slide. Um, so all of this is really trying to bring our culture um, and our ways, our ancestral ways to to be able to help our people. Um, and, and when we can get our communities, our elders, service providers, all of us can, can be engaged in helping our family members, our children, our community. These are the people who are most instrumental in allowing us to be able to, to heal and, and transform way of thinking and way of behaving. And uh, so 
worthy experts. Our elders are, are the experts. Why don't we just use what we know to help ourselves? Next slide. So in 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 the work that we're doing, we, we've been able to put together um, a curriculum that really helps us to bring back many of the teachings and to be able to come to a point where we're caught up, we're able to catch up in all of the, the teachings, the personal health and wellness skills, the tools in which we've missed out in the last couple hundred years. So, so our elders have put this together to really, um, once a person who, who's, who decides that healing is necessary takes that step, then we're able to, to upload the tools and skills to, to, to stay on that journey and to become well and then to be able to pass those skills on to the next person. So next slide. So we, we, we provide these services to communities uh, through the tribe, and the tribe has to um, invite us. We, we don't go to, to a community without being invited um, because um, everything that was imposed on us, that was a system that really caused a lot of harm. We know what it feels like, and we're not going to do that. So a community um, has to invite us. And these are the various kinds of activities that we do. We work with communities once we've had, had the first three-day gathering, which is looking at historical trauma, um, healing, kahuyun, grieving, traditional healing. And then we look at the cycle that, that we looked at um, in the previous slide. So, and then when there's healing that starts to take place, then we do follow-up gatherings, activities to bring more healing until the community begins to do their own. So next slide. So when you look at this slide, it's a system and, and the method in which we begin to restore our, our ancestral system of, of, of behavioral health services. And it involves, we have activities for, we do these activities with very young children, youth, adults, elder, family, and um, it it really brings brings um, pride so so that in our culture in our way so that individuals on their own can seek all of this um, in their communities and they can work with each other um, to to um, restore health and wellness. So um, I've given you a very last slide, uh, or the, the next slide. I've given you a very, very brief summary of what our work encompasses, what we are trying to do with our own people in our communities. And there's some incredible transformation taking place. Um, so. Part of the work also, um, we who are leaders in all of this, we translate between our elders and our uh, the Western world so that there's communication, understanding, and um, all of us working together in trying to provide the most meaningful behavioral health services in our communities. So um, um, I want to thank all of you for spending this time with me um, 
and I hope that this was very helpful for you in your communities, whether you are a, an indigenous person somewhere across the country or a non, non-indigenous service provider. When all of us can come to an understanding, uh, come to the table, and be in the same space, we become effective partners for each other, and we help each other so that the, um, the person who is needing our services is, 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 um, gets the most out of this. So thank you very much, and, and I need to save some room. Thank you so much, Rose. Um, we do already have a couple of questions that have come in, but um, for those of you who are joining us online, um, the, you can type your questions into the Q&A pod, which is just to the right of the presentation pod. Um, if you have your presentation full screen, you'll want to click that full screen button again so you can see the Q&A pod. Um, and I apologize to those of us who are just joining by phone. We don't have a way of, um, of allowing questions uh, simply through that. But, um, but hopefully, um, if you have questions, they'll be addressed. Or you can certainly respond to our email that will go out after the presentation. Um, so our first question is from Randy. He asks, is your curriculum tribe specific or could it be adaptable or helpful to other tribes? It, it, so all of us as indigenous people, we have a cycle of life. And historically, each, each, um, each indigenous um, person aware um, has a side life in which there was a system to teach. Um, it's very adaptable. And we, we have also had um, uh, non-native people who have really gotten much out of our cycle. So our elders tell us, on this earth, there is no other than a human being. All of us need to learn how to love. All of us need to learn how to be of service. All of us need to learn generosity. And so our cycle looks at um, uh, developmentally the, the very important things that um, and a human being needs to, to learn to be able to live a healthy life. And so it, it's adaptable. Yes. Great. Um, then we have a question from Cindy who says she works both in substance abuse and mental health. Um, I think it's part question, part comment. Um, she says, putting this into a workable recovery plan is a challenge for me as a clinician and as a tribal member. I feel compromised ethically at times, especially as we go towards billing for Medicaid and EBP. I need help in learning the way to help create workable recovery plans and incorporating this as this is what I do. Heart skills is a wonderful way to put it. So do you have any thoughts on that? Rose? Yes, that, that, that is something that, that, um, that we're beginning to address. And understanding these two systems, they're very, very different. And um, our elders tell us part of this, this, like, this whole idea of confidentiality, it's a barrier to, for people to, to heal because um, uh, we, can't, we can't change behavior in isolation. Those people who love us, our parents, our family members, they need to be active participants 
in in our our changing behavior and our ancestors didn't have this confidentiality so we're 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 struggling at this point to allow for those two ideas to meet and and um, when we work very closely with our elders and they they become <clears throat> active participants in all of this they know how to work around those things they 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 give us um, the tools and skills to be able to, to meet halfway and ultimately, we would like to have a system that we would like to hear is a very good system. Because this traditional heal not for one. And how can we have a system that's blended so that we can provide services for everyone so that people don't fall through the cracks? And so, um, when when we have these trainings and conferences, <clears throat> we talk about our own stories, so that um, and and at one point each one of us, like I talk about having been a victim of sexual abuse, at one point in my life. That that was a, that confidentiality was something that I held on to, and as I look back, not not be not telling. That was the biggest fear from the of that experience. So very very different. So all of us need to work as to how we. We can blend these two rooms, and many of our listeners, many of our participants, um, once they become engaged, confidentiality is no longer an issue. It, our elders tell us that that belongs to somebody else. Let them have it. We have something else that's not ours. I don't know if I answered your question, but I or or. Um, resolve your some of the issues that that you're 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 dealing with. So, and our el elders also tell us we will not be able to help anyone unless we help ourselves first, and to be able to go beyond the hurt harmful impacts of our experiences. So um, healing begins right here in order to be able to lead others to heal. Right. Um, thank you, Rose. And uh, we did have one other comment that I wanted to share um, since we have a number of people listening to. Um, Cindy says, the part I miss are the gatherings of people from the different tribes and urban programs to focus on learning and growing in our ability to continue our work in our communities. These are very helpful, but I would really appreciate an opportunity to meet and work with others who are trying to do the same things we are. Um, so yeah, I, um, Rose, if you want to comment on that as well, but I will just say that um, Part of the reason we, we hold these webinars is to um, hear about different programs from across the country and to, to share them, uh, you know, with the, the greater um, behavioral health and, and um, addiction services members um, who are working in Indian country especially. And, um, and so I would welcome if, if people are aware of programs that they, they want more information on or if they work in programs that they would, um, you know, love to share about what they're doing to, to please let us know because this kind of collaboration is, is important work too. Um, but Rose, did you want to say anything additionally? Um, I, I really, I try to learn from other 
other indigenous people around the world and Canada and Australia and and all of us, all of us as indigenous people, um, we we have been harmed, and all of us are trying to um, help ourselves. And uh, because we're all indigenous people, I I find that learning from other people around the world, I can adapt um, to utilize. In, in our programs and activities, we can all teach each other. We're like that elder said, we're, we're not so different as human beings. We each have a different path to try and get the same thing. So, and even, even our non-native partners, them too. So, um, when we can teach each other, when we can learn from from each other. Um, our elders tell us, there's people out there smarter than you. Um, learn from them, whether they're, whether they're helpful, whether they're good things, or whether they're bad things, you can learn from both. Um, like your experiences, your, your bad experiences, your harmful experiences, they're big teachers. They provide wisdom, so, um, um, but, but the, the most important thing we as Indigenous people, we need to, we need to learn what helped our ancestors. It's who we are, all of who we are that's going to be the most powerful, our most powerful medicine in our own healing, whomever we are. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if, if, if I'm making myself clear. And I have put my um, email address so if there's something that you have any further questions on to uh, discuss over email, I'm perfectly willing to do that. Great. Um, and yes, I have, Rose, I've got the slide up with your email address um, right now. And so um, I, I just wanted to say, too, we, we had a few other questions come in. But um, since we are uh, just a little over, um, I think if it's okay with you, Rose, I'd love to pass these additional questions on to you. And if you um, could answer them by email, then I can send them out to everybody. So would that would that be okay with you? That would be just fine. Wonderful. Thank you so very much for this time. Yes, and um, thank you so much, Rose. It's been such a pleasure, and I just appreciate you taking time out of your um, very important work to, to speak with us today. And I want to thank everyone for joining us. Um, and uh, just so, just to remind everyone, we will be sending out a follow-up email, which you should receive tomorrow. And that will include um, a link to handouts of the presentation, as well as a link to the recording. Um, I know a couple people commented that they um, had trouble viewing the slides, so um, the recording, you should be able to see the slides just fine. Um, and and if, you, if you wanted to view this again, and, um, and also as we close out, you will be redirected to our survey, so we would appreciate if you could take a few minutes and let us know what you thought of um, this, this webinar. Um, and did you have any, any other final comments, Rose, before we close out? No. Thank you so very much. And Kate, thank you for being patient with me. <laughs> Not at all. No, I, I appreciate your um, ability to overcome technical difficulties. It's uh, always a bit of a challenge. But um, thank, thank everyone, and especially you, for um, your patience with technology, because it doesn't always work the way we want it to. But um, yeah, thanks again, and I hope everyone has a great day.